Record. Um, good evening, uh, viewers. Um, life has its ups and downs at the best of times, but today when the world feels more turbulent than ever, we are still committed to bring our members, non-members, uninterrupted support and advice. With unlimited access to our website, we can follow the latest analysis and advice on COVID-19 in our coronavirus content hub. You also, you will also discover expert guidance on taking care of your loved ones, and you can find inspiring stories of optimism and social connectivity in our You're Not Alone Connect Hub, facebook.com forward slash DCAUK. We want to start by saying we are here to raise voice for the both restaurateur and the staff from our industry. We are not here to shame or give bad name to an individual. Our main motto is to condemn any wrongdoing and support who needs support at this time of need. We discussed about staff facing some issues about staying at their current accommodation when the restaurant is shut due to COVID-19. We want to say this is a small number of individual owners are at fault, not the majority who are most supportive towards their staff. And I have spoken to several owners. And the message is, we all condemn this kind of inhuman act. There is a call for name and shame them, but we are not an authority to judge them. We can only raise it to you, the viewers. Good evening, gentlemen. Good evening to you. Uh, let me introduce uh, my panel today. I've got Minhas Kibria from Ad Media. Good evening, Minhas. I've got uh, Mashrah Khan from Patreon Association UK. Good evening. Good evening, you. How are you? I've got uh, Ali Ahmed uh, from Patreon Association UK too. Good evening. Hello, everybody. Hope you're well. And I've got Abdulaziz, a chef. Good evening, Abdulaziz. Good evening. Yeah. And our friend Mike Markham. How are you, Mike? Evening, everyone. Fine, thank you. Cheers. Sure. Uh, let me start uh, by going to Minhas Kibria. Your latest uh, drama lockdown. Please, can you enlighten us on this? Well, this story about this um, this guy, this vulnerable guy, who loses his job uh, because the, the place, that the, the restaurant he, he um, works in, is of course closed down um, because of uh, the lockdown. So he loses his job and he has to leave his uh, uh, accommodation where, 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 um, where the, 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 the accommodation provided by the restaurant. So he, he has to leave. Then, then he goes to his um, friend, family, um, gets no support. So he's a short, short job. Um, uh, Minaj, can you come a little bit forward so we can hear you properly? Can you come a little bit forward? That's it. Yeah, please. Can, you hear me? can you hear me now? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, it's a story about this guy who ends up on the street, basically. We can't, we can't hear you. Yeah, let me see. Um, I don't know why. Um, hang on. Let me see. Yeah, if you, if you come near to the phone, I think you're on the phone. That's why can, 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 you hear me? can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you now. Yeah, right. Right. Okay, yeah. yeah the, the, I mean, the lockdown story uh, is, is about a guy who works in a restaurant. The restaurant closes down. Then, then the the restaurant owner makes him leave the premises so he can't stay there anymore so so he ends up uh, as a result he ends up on the street he's he doesn't get any help from his friend or family so no nowhere else to go so yeah that's that's all. it's a short film basically yeah well, 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 where did you get this story from i mean is this something an imagination or is it a true story well th this story uh was was reported by uh abu tayr aziz uh, i think he's 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 with us today uh, yeah, he's on, with us today, yes. on this uh, group chat. So, um, yeah, it, it, he reported it and I, I heard it. I, I didn't personally get in touch with him or anything, but um, I then me and my friends, um, the, the cast, cast members that you saw uh, in the short film, um, we all decided we will make something on this subject because if there are people who are in the government street and if, if people can help them, if we can help them, then we should. So if this story, if my film can actually um, help people persuade or enlighten or actually um, change, change his heart, changes his restaurant owner's heart who, who have 
uh, um, evicted people or who may be uh, thinking of um, getting the staff out. So they, they, they don't. So they, they, they help them. They help them stay where they are. So they have a place to stay and they, they, have, um, they have food. So I mean, it is a very, very... Um, I, I do understand that uh, uh, creating awareness is a good thing, a good thing. But um, um, I've seen the video myself and obviously the way uh, it's been portrayed, obviously there's no way uh, um, a restaurant owner will do such a thing uh, uh, to take them out. The way it was done on the video, it's, it's, it's not... True, actually, um, because we, we have spoken, you know, we, we've got loads of friends within the industry and everything. And I, I don't think a restaurant owner would be that cruel and do it that way. Um, so what do you want to say on that? Uh, uh, well, 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 I hope not. I hope not. It, this is just a drama. So nothing to be taken uh, too seriously. Um, it should be, we should learn from it. It's out there for people to um, see and, and people to understand. What's, what may happen, what, what probably, probably has happened, probably may happen. So basically, um, it's just an awareness video, to be honest. Sure, uh, sure. It's, not, because... it's not targeted anybody. It, it wasn't based on any, any individual or it was not um, ma made um, to actually harm anybody or anything, to be honest. It's just a story which I felt that, that I, 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 should, I should tell. Sure, and I do understand your point of view, but uh, my, my question to you uh, as a restaurateur that uh, why not different uh, a business like grocers or any other one that you can put into the, uh, uh, the drama? Yeah, I mean, uh, yes, well, um, this, this particular story is, is based on um, a guy who works in a restaurant and, and he lives um, on the restaurant premises. In, in the accommodation, and he is jobless, and he has to eat. So that's the story. Is, uh, so maybe in the future I'll do something on groceries, but uh, the, uh, but I, I, I think similar thing I've done. Um, I think uh, I think uh, uh, um, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Um, there are. I mean, look, this is a story that uh, we've been talking about quite a bit, and obviously this is an unfortunate scene, and I'm sure uh, we all in one. We all agree that this is only a tiny minority of uh, the owners doing that. We never, I think we all agree on that. Um, but um, yes, uh, I will come back to you on that regarding a, a, a you need to do a movie on the restaurant owners. We're doing good things for this town. There's yeah, no, uh, well, uh, if, you, if you guys, if you guys uh, um, give me a budget, if you all, all the restaurant bosses get together oh, and provide to me with a budget, I, I can do something positive on the, on the restaurant the industry. Restaurant owners were doing so good. Um, I want to come back to Azit Bhai. Azit Bhai? Uh, you, have it, you, you have made a YouTube uh, uh, video and circulated on the social media. Can you please tell us about this one? Okay. I think this is where uh, uh, Minas Bai took the inspiration from. Mm -hmm. okay. Okay. Is it possible Can to speak you, Bangla? Yeah, please, please. Yeah. Uh, it's, uh, please. I mean, Zal Khan, 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 and the restaurant that I restaurant is on the Tahar Zagani. I know a chapel license. I am a Tahar Zagani. I am a sofa. I am a sofa. I the EF man, legal man, can have a shop that he gets. It was fifty plus. I miss in the Lamb the Epson Marsham is seen, but only Manus and Terra now sit them, but institution as we. Time you have to message the Nakanaz, there are restaurant owners that are asking. There are the Afnara on to at least Zara Zara Kagos Fotro Naiba as a single Jara Setar of Taharzagani. At least Tara Taharzagan, the Manovic in Tahoya. Just a message is here, it's tonight. Plus, our other friend has seen Tar Makadri Hamburto, Tar Restrain Bundu or Fermentar Gobisi. I say Amargese, Tar Taharzaganai, I mean, right part of Hondo Taralia Gussi, Jupajan Taharzagadiba, 
আমি তো ট্রেন স্টেশন নিয়ে দিছি বা কয়টা কাম করে আমি যাই মুগি খামো আর নেক্সট ডে আমি বারে মোমা খাবর সব স্টাফ um should understand that mm-hmm. if there is a wage cut uh, is for everybody's good the owners close the restaurant and he's not going to get anything obviously he has to wait for the final yes. uh, but if the restaurant is open then he is getting something out of that because um we cannot we, we need to be all lenient to understand so the staff here as and staff uh, salary to perform this one but he has no no other option like you should i was speaking at the you should turn my just to put up for you আমার <laughs> 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 Now, now if you're starving, you know, I'm a human being, I'm a shuffle human being, and we all should have that uh, sympathy towards uh, anybody. I'm usually, if I'm in trouble today, in this situation, I have no sympathy towards me. So it's not, uh, it's not staff, it's not uh, anybody, no, but, but, it's a human being. But I like say, I'm not sure if I'm going to talk to you about the future. চিহ্নিত করা যায় কিভাবে তো মানুষ <laughs> আমি <laughs> 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 Okay. Um thank you uh, Aziz bhai I'm going to come back to you in a bit um Mushar bhai. Yes sir. Yeah. Um yes uh, uh how are you tonight? Yeah I'm fine thank you. It's good. All good. Um obviously we've been talking about this subject for last uh, one week or so and we had a program last Monday. Um I I want to hear your point of view uh, as a restaurant owner. What uh, do you, what do you want to say about this? About what staff prices? Or yeah well staff crisis on or the the issue mr aziz just uh, uh, said uh, to you what, what's your intake on this it's it's hard to believe you know restaurant owners will disregard employees like that by just saying here take your bags and walk away from here you know if they're employed by the business obviously they're on the payroll they haven't received a p45 to say here leave your premises your job is now you know now terminated they're giving them a leave for a certain amount of time on furlough and for them to come back should they be doing takeaways 
part of the employees to stay in the books and continue to work. But obviously, by doing a takeaway, the salary will have to be cut because it's not a restaurant. And on a takeaway, the costs are generally higher because the stock is usually needed twice as much. <coughs> Would you agree to that? You know, on a takeaway, I agree to that. Yes. You know, you know, the, the, the cost of goods in terms of purchasing is, you know, you're talking nearly 50, 60 percent more than your average dish going up on a, on a restaurant plate. Mm -hmm. One, your takeaway portions are nearly twice the size. Do you know where I'm coming from? You know, your, your cost is, is dramatically higher. Sure, sure. Um, so whoever is staying behind on the takeaway basis, obviously yeah, there's a pay cut involved. Just coming back to Aziz Bai's question, you know, if they're doing extremely much business, but still, the takeaway situation is a completely different business. But in terms of employees, and employers kicking them out, it's, it's very, very hard to believe that, you know, certain owners will be doing this. Mm -hmm. I understand, especially uh, in this uh, in this day and age, it's really, really unthinkable. Uh, uh, you know, we know how hard it is exactly. getting employees in businesses nowadays. You know, employees are you know are mo most likely got you know gold mine in the business. Mm, yes. No, no, obviously, and I'm, I'm sure, look, you've got uh, loads of friends, I've got loads of friends, cousin, family members, they own the restaurants and stuff, and, you know, we, we never heard of this uh, thing. What's wrong, right? Yeah, neither, neither have I. I've not come across anyone to say, look, I, you know, I'm, I'm on the street, and, you know, should there be someone on the street, come to us, we, you know, we will help them. But, you know, mm -hmm. since our show on Monday, have we had any calls by any vulnerable people to say, look, help us? Mm -hmm. How much you want? No, uh, well, we did, we didn't, but we did have lots of calls regarding this issue that yeah. <laughs> what we're talking now. Um, the other one is basically one of my friend uh, uh, from uh, hold on, I'll tell you where um, New Maldon. New Maldon. Um, uh, his name is uh, Johir Lalom. Uh, his restaurant name is Lala Kast. He actually called up to the, I had a lengthy discussion with him and he has offered, he condemned the situation and he's, like us, it's really hard, he, he can't believe that this is happening. But what he said is that um, if uh, uh, anything, something like this happens or is someone in need of help, get in contact with him, he has got accommodation, it will be completely free for any vulnerable person that has been uh, uh, chucked out or due to COVID-19, this restaurant is closed and they have nowhere to go. He's got an apartment, there's two beds there, there's two person can go there, they can stay there as long as the, the COVID-19 situation is there, there's no rent you'll charge. Okay, so we have, a, we have a volunteer, but have we had any vulnerables call us up? To say, um, no, look, we, we, we haven't uh, had any vulnerable uh, calling us or uh, telling us the reason. That's fine, well, that just shows, you know, there are people who are actually living and staying in the accommodation that they were previously there. I mean, it's, it's, since our show on Monday, it's now Wednesday. Yeah. You know, should there have been people vulnerable and on the street, or using the phrase, they've been evicted or they've been kicked out, they, they, they would have been, you know, they would um, have. Last, uh, yeah, uh, I understand that we haven't uh, last week, but uh, we've got any accommodation available or anything like that. But today we are saying that if there is anybody there, uh, Aziz Bai, uh, anybody knows anybody uh, who wants accommodation, uh, Joey Ralom from um, Tarbiton, Lala Kash, he will give accommodation to people. He's there to help us okay. out. Um, Thank you, Mashrub Bai. I'm going to come back to you. Just give me a couple of minutes. I know you're yeah. very rushed. Um, just give me a few minutes. I want to speak to Mr. Ali Ahmed. Uh, uh, Hi. Um, yes, I'm sure you can this this to you, or what, what do you have to say about the uh, current issue? Assalamu alaikum to everybody. Um, yes, um, first of all, I'd like to say um, I obviously condemn all these issues, uh, but thinking of it and viewing it from a, you know, from my point of view is, I really find it hard to actually accept the fact that there will be bosses who actually are doing these stuff, but you never know. There might be a minority that are doing these stuff. So um, I would actually urge my fellow businessmen, restauranters, um, if there is anyone that is actually doing anything like that, actually please give. Basic necessities, food, accommodation is actually 
is counted as a basic necessity to these vulnerable staff. Mm. Uh, like you said, you have a friend there from somewhere in London, I think. Um, if anybody needs uh, access to accommodation, he's providing it. But actually, um, I've got loads of friends, family members who are in this very trade. Um, I've not actually heard of any case where somebody is um, saying, um, I've been kicked out, I've got nowhere to stay, nowhere to sleep. But if there is ever, like, um, ah, this is very, very good, you have made a very nice um, video, you probably have, ha have got a friend that's actually been affected. So it's a very, very small minority. Um, but if there is anybody out there again, I myself, I'm from the West Midlands, I live in Birmingham, I could arrange if, some, if there is a vulnerable person out there that um, needs accommodation, if you could tell them, please, they could get through to us via uh, our email address or they could phone Shimawai. Um, you can let me know. I'll, I'll arrange them my accommodation in Birmingham. I'll give them all the basic necessities that I have friends that's willing to do that. So if there is anybody that would not, does need accommodation, they can contact us. But um, I very rarely think we Bengalis, you know, we Bangladeshi people in the um, UK, even for example, if my job went, I used to live in a restaurant, I could go and stay at a relative's house. So uh, it's, like Minas Bay, you have done a very nice video, but I think, what you need to do also, it's, uh, it was a bit one-sided story. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, there's many restaurateurs out there that are doing very good for the community, for their employees. So probably your next video will be based on restaurant owners. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, uh, 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 Mike, um, I'll come to you uh, a little bit later on. <laughs> yeah, I want to go back to um, yeah, that's uh, basically uh, yes, Mike. Um, I know you can do video and everything, uh, how you portrayed back to that scene again. It was, it, was, uh, it was totally not how the restaurant are uh, 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 treating the uh, staff. This is something um, I will condemn, uh, condemn uh, because that, that video shows us as a restaurant somewhere, you know, evil or something like that. But um, this is not what we are. Uh, Minas Bhai, what do you want to say on that? Shumbai, uh, I'm so glad. I'm so really, I'm really actually glad that uh, my my short film has uh, has got um, all of your attention. And, and I'm sure um, majority people are not like that. Um, this whole idea was taken from the report that Abu Sahar Aziz has posted on his Facebook. That's where that's where, that's where the inspiration came from. So um, so um, I'm I'm sure there are few people out there um, who probably um, are doing this. So yeah, please if you can all get together and basically create more awareness within your association and, and try to help vulnerable people, uh, not let them end up on the street. And as you saw in my drama, the guy has no no place to stay, nothing to eat, no money in his pocket. So what does it do? So it, it's, a, it's a very dire situation. So we, we need to address that. And that's the whole point, whole purpose of the video is to create awareness. Hence the reason we are sitting here today and discussing this. So yes, um, uh, I, I have uh, plans to basically make few parts. I've just completed part two uh, of lockdown, um, aiming to release on Friday. And um, then working on part three. So um, let's see where the story goes. Um, I can't promise anything right now. Um, and as you guys, as you all have uh, requested to, to show positive light um, from the restaurant owner, I may, I, may, I may include that. I'm not sure yet. I, I, I only follow the story. So, and, and all the brothers are there um, who are condemning this. Thank you so much. Please carry on condemning. Please carry on raising awareness. And Abu Tahalbai has touched a very sensitive part. Um, of this particular crisis, um, the homeless people, the, um, the people, sorry, the, the people that are becoming homeless as a result of uh, of the lockdown, and we all need to play our part. We all need to work hard to to help people. Um, I, I wish I had space in my home. I would have brought. I would, I would actually let people come and stay um, at, at my home. You know, I'm willing to do that, but unfortunately, I don't have enough space. Um, and, and I'm sure you all have the. Um, if you have space. If you can help people, please do. Mm. So, um, 
yeah mm -hmm. so if you might please carry on yeah no thank you uh, uh, for that i mean obviously uh, due to a uh, lot of um, look we have people um, especially to do with staying at home like uh, we don't have big houses like bangladesh we have got uh, children vulnerable adults in the house so it is, it is really hard actually for someone in uk to uh, accommodate another person for two, three, four yes. weeks. You know yes. that. It's, it's, of it's course, really, of course. So we can't blame them as well. There are mm -hmm. other people that are like But this, at, at, uh, at least in the restaurants where, where they work and where they live, yeah. at least if they, if they can just keep them, just, just, you know, keep them there where they are. Don't pay them. I don't think they need to be paid. At oh. least the accommodation is there. And they can, they can buy their own food. I'm sure they can buy their own food. I, I agree. I agree. I mean, as I said, look, most of the restaurant owners has left their uh, staff within their uh, staff accommodation. And as you know, from our uh, restaurant uh, um, history and everything, you see that accommodation is upstairs. There yes. is no extra yes. cost to it. Yes, one or two restaurants, they have their accommodation somewhere a little far and, you know, different houses and stuff, but most yes. of the restaurant accommodation upstairs. So yes. um, there is no extra cost to it. And I, right. I, I can wholeheartedly say that uh, there is a only, I would say, 0.1% of that. Maybe, uh, maybe. Owners are doing that, maybe. Uh, 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 well, uh, there is, as Mr. Aziz has got the proof, you know, but this is a tiny, tiny bit. So what I am saying, like my friend uh, uh, Jairo has said that, look, you will uh, accommodate two people. So I'm sure uh, in your uh, uh, drama on the second part, there's something needs to come about that. Uh, uh, yes, way. absolutely, absolutely. Yes. Yeah. Well, um, l l let's see. And I would like to make a couple of re couple of requests. Um, sure. I mean, be because of the lockdown, we see the, all the restaurant closed. And if you guys, if you guys can also campaign that uh, on Eid days, if the restaurant can remain closed, so the, the staff can celebrate their Eid with their family, this is something that um, you know uh, we, we we don't see. We we, we see the staff uh, actually on uh, uh, they they have to work on a very special day. There's something, something else you guys need to look at. Or do you want me to make another video on that? Mm -hmm. I'm sure. No, no. Um, yeah, I know. But uh, look, uh, we, we are in a situation. The reason for the discussion, we have, uh, I'm sure, um, due to the current situation, the president time we are in, everybody is sort of like uh, so, uh, no, uh, emotional and everything. That's that's the reason that uh, we haven't faced this situation ever before. So hence uh, we, we are discussing because in this time uh, it was a different time. Maybe we would not have known as much. We wouldn't have. Uh, no, Shubai, uh, Shubai, I'm I'm sure you are a fantastic boss. I'm sure the brothers that, that have appeared on this uh, video uh, photo here. I'm sure they are all great bosses. There's probably no doubt about that. But this this particular story was was taken from a true. true uh, from a story that was reported by Abu Dhar Aziz. Um, so that means there are some people who are doing it. So this particular film was basically based on that situation. And, and in the future, in, in the future, um, if we do have any scenarios like this, you know, let's try to not, you know, chuck them out. Let's, let's try to help these people. Sure, sure. Um, you know, obviously, um, yeah, the reason we're talking about the small minority people who are doing it is because there is something wrong. Uh, when there is a good in the society, we don't talk that much. Uh, like our restaurant owners, 99.9% uh, .9 of the owners who are doing the good things, we, we are not talking yes. about it. But we should. Mm -hmm. Both sides mm -hmm. of the story, we need to put it on the finger because there are yes. a lot of um, staff that basically uh, denial to work. They're just leaving, they're not helping the situation, uh, uh, the owners, because of the uh, staff, the restaurant, is to, uh, the restaurant owners are closing the restaurant because oh, they don't want to work now because it's COVID-19 and stuff like that. Uh, I, I can make a film on that if you guys provide me with a good budget. No, I understand. We don't need we don't a good budget. I, I can, I can work. I can, I can make another, another film on this situation. We do not need a film on this. But what I'm saying is, that when there is good things, we do not talk about. When there is a small bad thing comes out, we all talk about it. So that's what I'm saying. We don't need any uh, uh, a film or, uh, or drama to portray the restaurant owners are good. We know that uh, uh, across the board. As I said, 
most of the restaurant owners, most, most uh, would be less when I'm saying most, all of them, except one or two, who are not doing these things. Yes, absolutely. Anyway, absolutely. thank you, uh, Minaj Bhai. Um, Aziz Bhai, what I want to hear from you that um, obviously you've given your message and uh, this message has come so far and we're talking about it and, you know, we all restaurateurs are in uh, uh, dialogue, in one dialogue that we do not want to see this sort of uh, thing in our society. And we all condemn wholeheartedly. Um, what's your say on this, please? Well, I mean, I'm special thanks to Dewan Minas by the Kibriya by the Tanjay Amara Yuzha Jokorsi. A drama, but I should not want to inspire you. Second thing, we look at it. Actually, a monster shop so much. Hundred percent of the actors, we possibly don't have a woman. If you want to strengthen your state website, you can review a book, hundred percent positive review. It's on it. I personally have a bad review. I do the know. I don't 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 I mean, hat for Balagi, Uno, Governor Bakun, Bosol, Amakun, Boyditan, Amakun, Yona, Amiaz, a worker, a regular Balasham for you. I stay a bit of Possor, I get a Hamosero, a little more Jugazu Gazum for Possi. I mean, show the hat for Balagi, I mean, Messes Tadisina. I mean, also my children, this is Zara Zara Hasta Hosso, but for our intention as a parallel. Hm. Just for another. I'm sure I mean. I'm sorry, as the I'm really sorry, but I'm a of Khalid Johoran like a message of this. I understand. Understand. And thank you, Amit for because uh, there are uh, some uh, number of uh, restaurant owners that live a bit upset than an uh, excited story because it's the uh, I have to clarify very much uh, this body and I'd like to add to that. Uh, Thought that this is uh, uh, create an awareness. The situation you just faced. I've never situation to face. Of course, for about the after one of course, we just awareness. Like what I said, General Rom is doing this. Like Ali said that he will accommodate people. If you think that this is a good idea and this needs to be aired, after the monochrome in Kabbalah Zinish, then you can do it. Like the other one, then you can do it. Obviously, I have to say that I have to say that I have to say that I have to say I have to Everybody's emotional. Between it, as on manusiti thahar zaga fine khayu hune. Just like hunle, kula zuma chuo nao me, chuo zudi nao, khayu zudi hune. Logala automatically afnar emotional is. Between it, and thank you, uh, Aziz Bai, for uh, bringing uh, uh, this issue uh, uh, to us. And uh, I would say that uh, majority of us are not in the bracket. I know, I know. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So much the harassment. The majority. Condemn this situation. I'm sure uh, after this video, uh, they will uh, think twice to do anything. Because if I, I do it. Yeah. Um, Hello. Yes. Um, please, uh, can you tell me about the post on the uh, Facebook page about the business grant? All the council across the UK has started paying the uh, uh, the small businesses. Can you tell me on this one, please? Okay. Um, there are also, I think there are reports, uh, majority of the council are still far away from paying the uh, business grants. I've got, okay. I've got a case, uh, I mean, we've got some calls and messages like in Tower Hamlet, business are saying they are not getting the right amount what they should. After let's, contact, do, let's, let, let's, let's take one question at a, let's take one question at a time. Tell me. So, so in terms of business grants then, Mm -hmm. Every you've got to understand there's millions of business 
in the UK. Well, I'm trying to yeah. mm -hmm. So the grant, the, the local authorities would have sent letters to all businesses towards the later part of March. Mm -hmm. so they should have had all the postal either by the end of March or the first week of April. And on that letter, it's very, very self explanatory where it tells you your business rate reference number along with a, a user code and the user code is normally based upon your rateable value of your premises so the rateable value if it's under 15,000 you are entitled to a 10,000 pound grant if it's over 15,000 you're entitled to 25,000 mm pounds -hmm. so that's the question to that's your first question how does the grant scheme work no, no, no. My, my question was, uh, obviously, it's been quite a, quite a long time since uh, it all started, so it, it's fine. This is okay, you just said that it out. But my question is, are all the businesses getting their grants? It's been 19 days because 1st of April all started. And we're hearing a lot of business have not got their grant yet. Okay. What's your so intake? What, what we advise for businesses to do, as long as they have completed the online procedure, they would have had an acknowledgement from the portal itself to say it's been acknowledged. I suggest they... It's not, it's been... not, uh, Mr. Mashrov, I, I'm sure you will agree with me. It's not acceptable that uh, they accepted. The money should have been in the account two weeks ago. The government you... just promised on the 17th of March. Then he said like April the 1st, everybody started. All the Most of the, the, a lot of council have already paid. But this is not acceptable. People are still waiting for it. What, what we need to establish, have, have these individuals contacted the local authorities to say, has our application been submitted? That's one thing that we need to understand from the individuals to make sure they have called the local authorities to confirm that their application submission has been accepted. Don't get me, you know, when, when these applications are submitted, there may be omissions or errors that need to rectify. That's one. So I suggest everyone who hasn't received they, the grant, they should be in touch with the local authorities just to confirm that the submissions have been accepted. Sure, sure. Right. Okay. If they um, have been accepted, mm -hmm. they should have been paid out because the payout rate is normally within 48 hours. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. Maximum 48 hours. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, I've got another issue that, uh, yeah. uh, like Tower Hamlets, namely, uh, people are saying that there are business who are not getting the right amount of uh, grant they should get. Right. After contacting them, uh, they said like it's an error. What do you say on that? Well, in that case, there shouldn't be an error because if they, you know, it's if they, if they have supplied the correct information based on the rateable value, mm -hmm. the funds that should be given to them should be accordant to what they have applied for. Mm -hmm. And should there be an error, they should get in touch with local authorities, or if they need further help and seek, you know, further help and seek advice, they can certainly... One second, Marshall, bye, one second. Ali bhai, can you unmute, can you mute your speaker for me, please, Ali bhai? Thank you. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. yeah so sorry. Let's just go back to it again. So, should they not have received the correct grant funding for their business, I suggest they get in touch with local authorities and speak to revenue and benefits. Mm -hmm. Should they have any further problems, get in touch with us at Cape Print Association UK. We can take it forward on their behalf. Thank you. Thank you, uh, uh, Mashrav Bhai. That's um, not a problem at all. You know, if, if, they, if they have a problem, even if it means that their application, they're stuck with it and they've received the letter, they don't know what to do with it. Tell, we advise every, everyone across the board to come forward to us and we will make the application along with them to make sure it's correct. If they're having problems with local authorities, we can speak to them on behalf of the clients with authorizations. Sure, no problem. Um, so they can find the um, uh, phone number on the Facebook or the website, and the website address is uh, www.ebcauk.org. 
and the Facebook page, page is facebook.com forward slash DCA UK. Um, you'll get the uh, uh, phone number or the email address there. Uh, thank you, Mr. Um, Ali Bay. Hi, Shubha, yes. Yes, yes. I need to talk to you about a little bit different the boycott uh, of no, online platforms that uh, started uh, uh, last Monday, I guess. Yes. Uh, she was, you know, um, we had this coming uh, for a while now. I think uh, we're planning for the last one month. Um, it started this Monday, that went the 13th of April. It's the biggest campaign we're running. Uh, basically, what it is from the 13th of April to the 19th of April, from Monday 13th to Sunday the 13th, um, we have, I'm proud to say, we've got 52 of our members, our restaurant members, who actually boycotted all third party online ordering platforms. So, you know, that is the huge number. We would have even more, but majority of our members are actually closed, they're not trading. So this actually sends out a um, big message. You know, it might sound, people might say it's a small number, but 52 is not small. It's, it's giving all online platforms a kick. Because um, one week... I'm going to add to that. I mean, this is not actually a small number due to uh, just uh, and the how, the pulling power they've got and uh, the amount of orders they give uh, uh, to uh, individual restaurants. So to get a 50 percent is a massive number actually. Uh, and it's the, this is the first of its kind, I believe. Sorry, I, I lost you there for a second. Uh, I'm saying uh, this is the first of its kind, the boycott. Yeah, this is the first of a coin. I don't think anybody in the UK, no other organizations, nobody has actually took a step like this. So it is a milestone. It's, you know, I'm, I'm really proud uh, because we have 52 members that actually boycotted. I've just recently, just before coming online, uh, about six, half six, I've spoke to seven to eight members um, who I've actually you know, become friends with. And they're all saying, look, we've took off all online, third party online ordering platforms. The reason I'm saying third party is because many of these restaurants have got their own website. So people order through their own website. So that's not, nobody else controls that. Everything goes to them. But third party is something like Just Eat, Uber Eats, Deliver. And saying third party. They're saying, look, business is not affected at all. So, you know, they're doing regular trade. They're not, feed, they're not feeling anything at all. So I'm really proud. Um, now I know these online giants, they're going to feel the kick. They're going to say, whoa, what's happened here? They're going to see a huge difference because these people who actually um, come off from this online platform, they're actually big businesses. They, they drive a lot of online orders. So that's why I'm saying again is these guys are going to feel a pinch. I'm hoping it is already a success. It's only what? Today is Wednesday. We started on Monday. It's already a huge success for them because the weekend ahead. I know a few other restaurants that actually came off prior to the 13th. They came off on Friday, last Friday. They didn't use any online um, sources from Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So they were off before everybody started. They said, no, we want to head start. We don't want to give anything else to these guys. Uh, I want to add to that. I mean, I think this is a time that uh, obviously um, food outlets are closing everything. I think uh, people try to take the third party. They try to get the orders through their uh, website. This is, a, this is the right opportunity at this moment to try this out. This is the right time. That's why um, many Some, of our members have. I don't know, somebody's, uh, sorry, uh, somebody speak. Uh, can someone mute their speakers? I don't know. There's some background noise. Yeah, I got to hear some background. Okay. Yeah. What, I, what I'm saying is that uh, this is a, uh, as you said, is a unprecedented just eat, eat, deliver, and 52 restaurant members have done that. That's, that's excellent. That's excellent news. Thank you, Ali. Yeah, that's right. Um, we're coming to an end of the program now. Uh, Mike. Mike, unmute. There we go. I got there in the end. Hi. <laughs> yes, Mike. Um, I know you have a, a little 
uh, uh, we got to sort of a uh, uh, small time now for today's uh, conversation. Um, can you please, um, you know, just uh, what do you want to tell uh, our uh, members, non-members about the service that you're providing uh, and uh, how can you help them? Yeah, well, there's, there's, there's a couple of things. I think um, before I start on, on our service, there's been an update today by, uh, by the government in terms of the job retention scheme. So I thought I'd give a quick update on that because uh, there was a huge gulf of people um, that were falling through the gaps that actually started a new job after the 28th of February. Um, and I don't know if you guys have been aware of that, but a lot of people are saying, hey, how come we don't get the job retention scheme because we just started a new job, it's not our fault. Um, and what the government have done for them is actually to extend that period of time until the 19th of March. So that's quite a key impact. It's going to impact on roughly, the government estimates around about 200,000 employees um, across the UK who are now, who wouldn't have before, but will now fall eligible within the job retention scheme. So that's quite a crucial impact um, from those changes. And that will have a, a good impact on positively on a number of people too. And, um, and that links quite nicely into what we're actually trying to do. So um, in the grand scheme of things, as you can tell, there's a lot of pieces and moving around at the moment in time for, for lots of businesses. And there's lots of questions as you go through that as to what you should be doing, what you should be doing with your staff. And also thinking into the future when people start to open back up again, it's about how do I actually plan to bring people back? Am I going to need all of my staff back doing all their hours straight away? Or are we going to bring them back doing short time working? Or are we still going to have people laid off? What is the situation going to be? So what we're trying to do is work with businesses to help them to plan their way through that and to actually make sure they've got something physical in front of them that can tell them, if this happens, what should my next step be? How can I do this and how best to treat my staff through that process? Uh, can you unmute for a minute, please? Can you unmute? For the lead? Thank you. Yes, very much. Um, so, I mean, what we're trying to do is, is initially trying to help people to get through the current crisis and plan their way out so that they know where they're going to be when they come to the end of this and how they can then start to gradually reopen back up and also plan between whether they're going to go and start doing takeaways, how they're going to have a portion of staff doing that and a portion of staff on furlough and, and help them to go through those different processes. And it's, it's a really sad time is the big thing I would, uh, would state because from, our, from where we're sitting, we're seeing businesses at all ends of this spectrum going through really difficult times. And a lot of the time it's really sad because you can see there's, there's, human, there's human beings behind all of this. There's people in jobs and there's people that have a business and they've got all the pressures. We all know the pressures that us business owners have. Um, and everyone's in unique sets of circumstances. So there is no one size fits all for, for everybody. So that's the real key is trying to make sure whether it comes to finance or your people, you should be trying to plan for what's going to happen right. next. Thank you, Mike. Thank you. This is very crucial. Like, uh, you know, the, the, it's from, from the 19th of March up to, uh, from 19th of March, we have joined uh, uh, the new work that we're going to get paid, yeah? Yeah, so basically before it was up to and including the 28th of February, now it's moved to the 19th of March, so up to and including the 19th of March. So anybody who has started or been in work uh, up to and including the 19th of March will now be eligible under the uh, under this particular scheme so what it might mean is if you've had people that have been laid off who started mm -hmm. let's just say for example on the 16th of march that you would have to look to reopen your payroll for march to actually put them onto furlough and give them their furloughed pay and then do a resubmission back through to hmrc through your uh, rti mm -hmm. so i'm sure uh, the, the the portal will be opening on the 20th of april for the fingers crossed yeah yeah oh yeah absolutely and, and that's why this timing is so crucial because all of those that will now be eligible that weren't before are going to now be on your on your list to put forward to HMRC on the 20th on Monday. Sure. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. Um, no problem. Our program is just uh, obviously it's coming to an end in the next couple of minutes. All I want to say is that look, our program is uh, there to create awareness and uh, you know help and support our uh, our industry. This is the program is not to. Uh, um, bad name anybody or anything like that but uh, as you know if there is a sh issue small or big we cannot shy away from that even if it's uh, for a 
single person or two person or three person uh, or more people, but we cannot shy away from that. Uh, this is not uh, from the association, but from the human being part of it, that we cannot be just seeing one thing and not seeing the other thing. So, um, as I said, the association is for uh, the, the restaurant owners, restaurateurs, and the, the staff as well. Um, but obviously, we need to uh, be fair uh, uh, when we do the program that uh, there are a lot of restaurant owners who have been on the wrong, wrong end uh, uh, of the staff uh, behaviors as well. Uh, there are a lot of people that, you know, a lot of stories we had uh, today because I had a lot of calls uh, uh, regarding that. But obviously, we don't want to bring that subject up, otherwise, people do because the staff done this before, now we are doing this now. So that's why I don't want to bring this up now. But what I want to say is, uh, what I want to say is, <clears throat> um, we want to support the, you know, uh, we want to support the community. We want to keep the restaurant open, uh, as you know, uh, we are part of the frontline staff, frontline staff now. Whoever is the restaurant, the owners and the staff, we are, we are categorized as the frontline staff. We need to be there to support the community, support our people. Um, so yes, um, for the staff, uh, please uh, uh, support your uh, uh, restaurant, uh, uh, restaurant and uh, you know, work together. Uh, we don't want to, as I said, uh, to uh, sort of uh, give a deadline to anything or any anybody or any restaurants. What we want to say is uh, just be respectful, uh, and be humble uh, with each other and everybody. This is my, this is the last message. And thank you uh, to my panel today, Mia Sibria, Mrs. Bashar of Ali Ahmed. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Take care. Thank you. We, we anyway, have any of your no intention of hurting you. We are really sorry if it, uh, uh, if it, uh, if it hurt uh, anybody. Thank you very much and good night. Good night, everyone. Good night. Good night. Thank you, everybody. Thank you very much. <laughs> good night. Good night.